Hey Scotty, didn't we get a parcel somewhere? I'm waiting for that Modern Horizon 3 box. Oh, you cheeky, you already have it. All right, let's open it. Hello everyone and welcome to another one of our Lazy Swim unboxing videos, a series where Scotty and I take the time to unbox products and read our cards while letting you know how good they are and if the product is truly worth your time and money. So grab your favorite drink, sit down, relax and let us dive deep into this unboxing. Today, I am your host, Vlad. This is Scotty, and this is the Play Booster for Modern Horizons 3. Uh, I think the biggest set of this year. They have put quite a lot of thought, but also a lot of goodies inside of this expansion. And therefore, it's the craze, and everybody wants Modern Horizons 3. Thank you very much, Scotty, for that intro. Yeah, so this is going to be an interesting set. This is a set that supposedly around modern right so it's supposed to expand the modern and every time a modern horizon set has been released it has created quite a lot of waves in well the meta and yeah there are quite a lot of good cards in this expansion so without further ado let's dive in and see what we get here and how lucky do we get um if you're new here by the way first off welcome 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 and secondly we're gonna take our time and read most of these cards out and uh so sit back relax as we open this beautiful beautiful box funny enough modern horizons one was the first set in a long time then i managed to have a full play set of so that's why i really love just modern horizons as a set has some uh i guess significance for me here you have the drafting archetypes i've not had time unfortunately I've been really busy with work i've not been able to draft yet this expansion but if you're new um to modern in general and still want to try a little bit of drafting without too much of an expense because it, it, it is quite expensive to draft this in store um well because the boosters are really really expensive and we'll get to that in just a second you can draft this on arena this is the first modern horizon set that has been brought to digital so yeah we'll just start cracking i hope the weather whatever you are is not too crazy here in edinburgh it is at the moment 16 degrees and it's the middle of june so <laughs> quite crazy anyway let's start up with the first one is inspired inventors a two two cost three once this battlefield you get some energy counters you put a counter on a target creature or you create several artifacts energy is back i am kind of divided upon energy more or less you know i'm not a huge huge fan of it but you know eh, some cards in this set are going to be very interesting with that then we have skoa and Mage. it's a 4-4 goblin wizard it costs six so it's quite expensive whenever it enters battlefield deals four damage to any target discard another card named squad ember Mage. sacrifice two mountains and it deals two damage to any target so there's going to be cards in this expansion that are very much centered for the drafting experience because they do create cards just for that and then of course there's going to be cards for modern and legacy and vintage probably and especially commander because commander is in everything as you might have heard serum visionary is a 2-2 wool vidalkin wizard cost three enters battlefield draw cards quite two wither and bloom beautiful richard kane ferguson um illustration wither and bloom is an instant tiger creature gets minus three minus three until the end of turn and for two and you exile this from the graveyard you put a plus one plus one counter on tiger creature control so again cute uh, draft card gift of the viper put a plus one plus one counter and a reach counter and a death counter on target creature and you get to untap it so uh kind of like a spy spell plus counter spell not, not bad then we get next born unicorn is a 2-2 unicorn for two has bestow so if you cast this card with the bestow cost of four uh it's an aura spell and it will enchant a creature and then the creature will get everything underneath and it will get mentor plus one plus one and the target creature gets plus two plus two and has mentor as well well yay okay so we have cyclo superconductor that is a cool cool illustration it's a two two cyclops wizard it costs three it has it is on a cost has prowess so when you cast a non-creature spell this creature gets plus one plus one until the end of turn and then it enters the battlefield you get three energy counters and remember the energy counters don't actually dissipate as phases and turns and so you 
if I'm not mistaken, they just are counters on the player and they stay there until you use them up or there's an ability that removes. And then when it dies, you may pay three and when you do, it deals damage equals to its power to any target. Kind of a self-contained uh, machine that does a lot of things. Then we have one of first lands, it's a sheltering landscape and taps at one generic. You sack it, search your library for a basic mountain force, planes card, but and put it in battlefield tap and shuffle. So this is one of those land fixers. Not bad, I can put it in the land slot here. Then we have, again, so far the cards have been very much centered for and the drafting experience, and I would reckon that you'll find 90-something um, percent of the commons and the uncommons uh, that cater to drafting and or commander, and then the rest is going to be for the meat and potatoes of this expansion anyway. Um, then we have Metastatic Evangelist, a Phyrexian Human Cleric, but a beautiful, beautiful illustration. It's a 3-1 that costs 2, and whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you get to proliferate. Quite, quite useful. Again, Commander card for me. And then we have Monstrous Vortex. It costs four. It's an enchantment. It's green. When you cast a creature, you spell with power of five or greater. You discover X, where X is a spell's mana value. And that's not bad. You exile top cards of your library until you exile a non land card with a mana value of, uh, of, of five or less. And you cast it without paying its mana cost or putting it into your hand. Put the rest at the bottom in a random order. And then we start with the Eldrazi's. I am. A fan of the Eldrazi's, not on the same way that I'm a fan of Phyrexians, but they're pretty, pretty freaking cool. And uh, I'm really happy to see them come back in this expansion. We have the Drone of Truth, which is a 7-6 Eldrazi, costs 7, and it does have Simic, and it's cost... It has the void, so it has no color. That's how you get around. But do remember that the identity of a card is based on the colors of the card. So even though it says it has no color, its identity is Simic here as well. So when we cast a spell, if a generic was spent to cast it, create two of the colorless Adrazi that you can stack to add one generic. And then you can also play it around as a land and any of the semi colors, which is the Drown Jungle. So basically the jungle is the Drowner comes out of the jungle. That's really, really cool um, on theme land. Um, and well, just overall split card or double sided card. Really, really cool. I like that. And we have the Worm Power Stone, which is Battlefield Tap. You add two generic. And then Fanatic of Ronus. I haven't seen Ronus in a wee while. It's a 1 4 Sneak Druid, it costs two. And you tap to add one green. And Ferocious, tap to add four green. Activate only if you control creature power four or greater. So that's the Ferocious part. And then you Eternalize for four. Um, exile this card from Graveyard. You create a token that's a copy of it. It says it's a 4 4 Black Zombie Sneak Druid with no mana cost. Eternalize only as a sorcery. And then we have our first foil. Um, this is territory color. It's a 7 5 Eldrazi. It costs 5. It's green in the cost, but it is devoid. And that's it. I'll leave it there. I won't repeat that every time. Uh, it has reach and landfall whenever the land enters the battlefield in control. You look at the top card of your library. If it's a creature card, you may reel and put it in your hand. If you don't put the card in your hand, you may put it into your graveyard. So it allows you to sift through the deck quite quickly. It's not bad. And uh, it's a. Uh, uh, of course, it's an uncommon, so you don't put the land into play tapped or anything like that, but hey, it's not bad. Okay, cool. And we shall continue on this beautiful adventure. I have not looked too deeply into Modern Horizons when we usually look at these. We don't really uh, go too deeply into the set just to just to have the experience of opening it for the first time together as much as we can because the spoilers have been there and we've been covering the spoilers on our social media. So we have Grave Dig. It's a sorcery cost two. It's black, choose one target player. Creates a 2 2 zombie and then return Tiger Creature card from Graveyard to your hand and you can entwine it as well. That's not bad, it's reanimate, but again, I reckon this is more for Commander or for Draft. Temperamental Uzwag. Uzwag is a Bushwag. And it's a 4 4. The cost 4 and it's green. And you adapt for 3 and um, adapt 2. And then modified creatures you control have trample. So this is again for the draft for the modified creatures. Thrive and Charm. It's an instant and choose one. Plus two. It deals damage equal to twice the number of creatures you control to target creature or destroy target enchantment or exile any number of target players' graveyards. Not bad. It's a situational card though. 
Now we have Inventor's Axe. It's an artifact equipped and costs only one. Has flash. When it says battlefield, you get two energy counters. And when it enters the battlefield, you attach your target creature control and it gets plus two plus zero. And you can equip it to pay uh, paying the two energy. No, it's not bad. Draft card. Tempest Harvester is a two one Merfolk Wizard. It costs two. When it enters the battlefield, you get um, two energy. That to pay one energy draw a card, discard a card. Nah, not bad. This is uh, this allows you to get through your deck. I, funny enough, I'm thinking that this uh, plus the commander deck, um, this expansion plus the commander deck of uh, the creative energy one are gonna be really useful if you can entwine them with the um, Fallout commander deck, the um, science one. Um, I, I, I don't know yet. I haven't had, had a look at the deck proper, but yeah. Expanding news. Uh, it's a three three, and it costs three. It has Golgari and for Golgari. You adapt one, and whenever it attacks, you put a plus one plus one counter on target modified creature you control. Not bad, it's okay. Nothing major. The territory color again. Quest for the Necropolis is an enchantment. It costs only one black landfall. Whenever land is the battlefield you control, you put a quest counter on it, and then for six, you sack it, put target creature from graveyard onto the battlefield in your control. This ability costs one generic last to activate for each quest counter on it. Very nice. It's kind of like a foretell, but for um graveyard interactions shenanigans reanimation so yeah it's 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 really nice um i think this is gonna be maybe a card that's gonna see play in some reanimate decks and commander is it gen generatorium okay so it's an artifact cost is it if you get one or more energy you get that many plus one and then you draw a card and activate only if you pay it or lost four or more yeah it's a bit expensive then we have the russian inspiration which is the is it one um Oh, the 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 lands um that is a double sided land etc draw two cards and discard a card at random unless you pay two generic uh, two energies and yeah and then you have uh, the enters battlefield tapped is a land not bad i like this i like the double sided lands i think they're really 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 cool um and it it's always nice that you are able to choose either or so that's always good then we have meltdown of course this is from ords of saga destroy each artifact with mana value x or less and um, that's a classic and then we have one of the first mythics birthing ritual it uh, is an enchantment it costs two at the beginning of your end step if you control a creature look at the top seven cards of your library then you may sacrifice a creature if you do you may put a creature card with mana value x or less among them cards onto the battlefield where it says one plus the sacrifice creature's mana value and put the rest of the bottom of the library random order that's really really good um you sack a creature so long as you sack big creatures then you're more likely to be able to cover whatever you put in and um you get to look at it and then you sack and then you put a card into play it doesn't come into play tab so that's great so you can still have some shenanigans that's really really strong i think and of course i i would reckon this is more commander card but you know we'll see we'll see how it goes yuri auxiliary is a three three that costs four and when it enters the battlefield you support two and then we have a servo and a, an ad don't you just hate ads <laughs> anyway there you go and as we see more of these cards we're gonna speed up let me know in the comments down below how you like this expansion what are you what are your thoughts on this huh draw skull is an artifact equipment cost two it has living weapon i like living weapon as a concept equip creature gets plus one plus one and whenever it attacks each opponent loses alive and you equip it for two the gift the next born thriving sky claw is a three two cat dragon haha <laughs> it's a kitty cat it costs four has flying and when it enters the battlefield you get three energy counters and whenever it attacks you may pay three Three. If you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on it. Not bad. Ether Spike. Oh, it's an instant. It costs two. Two target spell. You get two energy. Then you may pay any amount of energy counter that spell unless its control pays one generic. And for each energy paid this way. So again, this is kind of like a a play on the other ether counter and uh, contaminating landscape so it's the same one but it's for the band colors that's very nice then we have the faithful watchdog it's a doggy and it is selesnia and it costs two as vigilance and it's the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters on it again more for a counter deck wow that is a cool cool illustration wow i really love the colors and that's so dark okay horrid shadow spinner is a two three horror 
costs three. And the Marion costs lifelink. And whenever it attacks, you may draw cards equal to its power. If you do, discard that many cards. Wow, that is uh, that's interesting. Um, this is going to be an enabler for graveyard interaction shenanigans. It might be really good um, in, in some commander decks. Again, most of these cards are for the draft or, yeah, commander, realistically. Anyway, Proud Pack Rhino. 3-3 three, three Rhino costs 3 and when it answers the battlefield, you choose 1. Put a shield counter on target permanent or you get to proliferate. Then we have the Disciple of Freelies. This is a 3-3 three, three Alf Druid. It costs 6. And with three green pips, so that's not easy. When it's a battlefield, sack another creature. If you do, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is that creature's power. And on the flip side, you have the garden, which enters the battlefield. You may pay three life if you don't enter stamp, and you just add one green. I like this card. It's not bad. It has some synergies that can be played with. Um, it's tricky. Then we have suppression rate. Okay, this is the Azurius of these. And tap all creatures target player controls. You may pay X energy you can then choose up to x creature stuff this way put a some counter on each of these creatures it's not bad but it's just like kind of expensive because you got to use your energy as well for this and it's costing five and then you have the orderly plaza on the back then we have annoyed altasaur <laughs> it's a six five oh seven reach trample cascade just a big dumb cascade key creature oh amphibian downpour so this card it costs three it's an hour enchantment and it has flash has storm and a shadow creature and the creature loses all abilities and is a blue frog creature with base power and toughness one one and that's a really really annoying card i love to see play in this but yeah overall it's cool and i like the fact that it has storm as well then we have the wonderful escape landscape uh, foil and then we have some zombie army that's really cool <laughs> and then the ad okay let's go let's go yeah so far has been a great great little um experience so far yeah but you, you know you gotta remember these things these packs are super freaking expensive right so this is not a product for the average player and uh, taking a whole box like this you might want to think about just buying those cards that you're interested in especially because as you see there aren't a lot of different alternate card versions so far that we've opened in a few packs that we have so therefore if you're not looking to stack up on alternate card versions and all so on and so forth and you just want some cards you might be better just buy them separately as usual and then we have kami of jealous thirst is a one three spare to cost three it has death that and for five each opponent loses two life and you gain two life this ability costs five less to activate if you've drawn three or more cards this turn oh warp tusker six eight eldrazi boar beast it costs seven it has reach when you cast your cycle you get to create uh, one of those uh, man eldrazi sex creatures and then you cycle it for three so that's not bad we have Dog Umbra, of course. It's uh, Enchantment Aura. Seen it. And then we have Squaw, Amber Mage. Other insignificance is it costs two. It's an Enchantment Aura, has Flash, uh, and Enchanted Creature loses all abilities and a uh, base power and toughness. 1 1. And for 3, you exile also. So that's not bad. I usually don't like kind of, you know, prison effects or effects like pacifism uh, if there's a lot of removal for that kind of stuff in the set. But the fact that you can exile it then as well is really, really nice. Then we have Refurbished Familiar. The 2 1 cost 4. It's a zombie rat artifact creature that has affinity for artifacts. It's just flavorful, I guess. Fine. And when it enters the battle, if you each opponent scatters a card for each opponent who can't you get to draw a card and then we have another one of those lands and we have obstinate gargoyle has flying as long as it's modifies a 2-2 that costs 3 and it has persist so it comes back into play then we have glaring flesh raker as a 2-2 eldrazi drum cost 3 when you cast a color spell um you get to create an eldrazi so that's really good this is going to be really good for any um eldrazi centered deck and especially the commander ones uh, this is going to be a really really good card to keep and whenever another colorless creature enters valve in your control glaring flesh shaker deals one damage to each opponent that defiler is the three five eldrazi cost five with the void kicker and when you cast a spell choose one if it was kicked you get choose both return like a creature to its owner's hand target player draws two cards then discards a card not bad for the cost and we have decree of justice wow from onslaught seen you forever beautiful beautiful card and then um yeah i'll guess it here <laughs> then we have chthonian nightmare okay this is one of the good cards it's an enchantment costs two it's black when it's balance you get three energy so you get to pay axe 
times the energy sacrifice a creature return nightmare to its owner's hand return that creature card with mana value x from graveyard to the battlefield activate only as a sorcery of course you have to build a lot of energy to be able to make it significant to reanimate insane cards but in general if you're just caring to reanimate something yeah and you can also do it for zero i would reckon because yeah you can do that uh yeah that's pretty cool that's good that's a good good rare then we have emmercool's messenger that is a beautiful beautiful foil it's an eldrazi pharaoh because the two one it costs two with blue and flying whenever you draw your second card each turn you get to create the eldrazi mana and then we get a beautiful art card signed that's uh what is this uh, an exterminator mark okay that's cool i love the foiling with the eldrazi especially the color one because the um, the pattern up here just lights up so much such a beautiful thing all right so that's good the chthonian nightmare that was our first big pull if i'm not mistaken or one of the bigger ones anyway not the biggest one there's definitely better then we have nixborn hydro this is zero one x bestow x answers trample and when it's the battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it and it gets plus one plus one for each plus one plus one counter and then expel the unworthy and it's a sorcery cost two it's a kicker and then choose target creature mana value through a last if the spell was kicked instead choose target creature and you get to excel to this creature and then it's control gains life it's mana value so just a, a, another way to excel in draft Molten Gatekeeper 2 3 Golem cost 3. If I creature Golem, whenever another creature answers battlefield, you control it, deals one damage to each opponent, and then you can unearth it. It's okay. Then we have Demon Fury, so it costs four. The sorcery is blue, the spell costs one generic classic cast for each card you've drawn this turn. You owner will target no land permanent, puts it in the library, second from the top or the bottom. Um, yeah. It's okay, it's another way to control in draft. As Viscerator's Insight, it's an instant cost two. As an initial cost, it casts a spell, sacrifice an artifact or creature. You draw two cards and you can flashback it. It's a cute little card, might be useful for some decks. Then we have the Bountiful Landscape. Oh, the Scurry of Gremlins. It's an enchantment, it costs four. When it enters the battlefield, you get to create two Gremlin creature tokens. Then you get an amount of energy counters equal to the number of creatures to control. And then for four, creature control, get plus one plus zero and gain haste until the end of turn. It's okay. And then we have Spawn Gang Commander. It's an Eldrazi Goblin. And it's a 2 2 that costs five. When you cast a spell, you get to create three of the colorless sack and generic Eldrazis. And then for two, second Eldrazi, which you can do that. And it deals two damage on your target. That's a cute one. And wow, the snow covered waste. That's really cool. The first Modern Horizon set brought back snow covered lands from back, uh, well, first was Ice Age and Call Snap, but yeah, now we have Snow Covered Waste, so that's really, really cool. I wonder if there's some interaction with the, the snow permanence in this expansion because the um, first Mod Horizon definitely had some. We have the Pinnacle Monk, it's a 2 2 that costs 5 Gen Monk Prowess when it's a battlefield target, instant or sorcery card from Graveyard is returned and then on the flip you just have the land if you pay through life and you tap um yeah good for mana fixing and just overall really really annoying if you're playing a prowess stack a drunk driver it's a one one artifact creature bird it costs three it's from the users block has flying and when it does a return another target artifact card from graveyard to your hand i haven't seen in a while <laughs> it's pretty cool to see it again um i, I guess this is kind of like uh, the list slot kind of not really uh, you know <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of they incorporated it and we have the tactics phoenix it's an enchantment phoenix costs 40 and it has uh, bestow it's a 2-2 collect evidence 6 flying haste enchanted creature gets plus 2 plus 2 and has flying haste and then you may cast it from graveyard using its bestow ability so that's pretty pretty cool so when it dies it is brought back as a bestow not bad a cursed marauder is a zombie warrior is a 2-1 it costs 2 minus the battlefield each player sacrifices an own token creature mountain and then again the card the art card from before okay we're almost halfway through the first block i know this is taking a while so now we will accelerate we'll start skipping some of the comments now because realistically as i said we usually don't do this i might stick around for some of the cards like well that's really cool but uh, the thing is because most of the cards are 
centered around uh, drafting and the drafting is going to be very very limited here um what we're more interested in are the big hitter cards right so that's what we're looking for so we'll focus now mostly on the uncommons and the rares and it's hope and their co kotal the first kotal actually um from the modern horizon interacted with the stove does it this one do the same is it two two that costs three and it's blue flash whenever you cast a spell counter attack a spell and opponent controls unless they won uh, generic and it has flying and it also has the void skidding precursor 3-3 three, three, Eldrazi drone it costs 3 the void menace whenever you sack a non-token is permanent you get to create a token so that's really really cool I like this kind of interaction but again more of a <laughs> commander card then we have Ral in the Policid Maze it's a saga enchantment and costs 5 and for the first step Ral in the Policid Maze deals 2 damage to his creature and planeswalker your opponent's control then in a second you may discard a card if you do, as all the top two cards of your library, you may play them until the end of your next turn. And then you create a spell gorger weird token that is uh cost three as a two-two weird with whenever you cast a non-token creature spell, you put a plus one plus one counter. It's not bad. Um yeah, it's 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 okay. It's like a weird twist on that. Oh, okay, there you go. We have the retro frame meltdown the original so we'll put the retro frame here oh kappa canary what the hell are you doing here it's a 4 4 turtle warrior that costs six with improvise so artifacts can help cast this one and for war four and whenever it or another artifact enters the battlefield under control you get to put a plus one plus one counter on it and it can't be blocked this turn this is an insane card what is it doing here wow that is beautiful. Uh, that's a good card, and this is a good pack. Wow, so much value in it. Then we have Flage, Titan of Fire Spheres, a 6 6 Elder Giant that costs 3 with Boros in a cost. And when it enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it's escape. And, and when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it gets to deal 3 damage to any target, and you gain 3 life, and then you escape for four so double all of the boros callers you exile five other cards from graveyard i like this one it's very very strong and then we have fang flames the void it deals four damage to like a creature or planeswalkers and then a token at card actually dry end let's go skip through the commons Ooh, glimpse the impossible that is a cool cool freaking illustration that costs three it's a source because of the top three cards of the library you may play these cards this turn at the beginning of your next step if any of those cards remain in cell put them into your graveyard and then you get to create that many of the spawn tokens wow that's really really cool that's another one that's nice and then we have envoy of the ancestors this is a human player it's a two three it costs three it has outlast for one modified creatures you control have lifelink so that's not bad you can frog mirror enforcer this is a frog mirror <laughs> as a four four it costs seven then you can prototype four four and it becomes a two two as a prototype it has affinity for artifacts that's really strong actually not bad for um for the affinity because for the affinity cost if you if you build it correctly you can definitely spam them out really quickly quickly then we have the glass wing grace this is the ores of all those double-sided cards this is an aura and enchanted creature gets plus two plus two it has life link and flying and it costs five to to do that that's not bad oh shrieking drake from vision okay that's really really cool <laughs> i haven't seen this card in a while this is a flying one one cost one answers about family return target creature controls its owner's hand so not bad it doesn't have flash or anything like that oh nice polluted delta this is a new illustration if i'm not mistaken for these beautiful beautiful fetch lands these are uh, well i mean the la creme de la creme as they say the florida trends and all that so it's nice to see you guys back and i love that because it lowers the value a little bit and that makes it more accessible for all players so i'm just lands on the side here just to keep track of how many we can get in this box and continue on soldier on yeah anyway this has been crazy honestly this year with with magic has been just absolutely crazy and you barely have the time to enjoy this and unbox this and play a little bit that already they're starting to talk about the next expansion which is the time with the assassin's creed that's just crazy <laughs> wonder if they're ever going to slow down i highly doubt they will they they hit a stride for them for their revenue for their things and uh, you know as a player 
who likes to well do this content creation thing and is becoming very taxing to cover every single expansion or item time and we enjoy doing this and we'll do it for as long as we can anyway this is grim servants is a three two zombie world that costs four has menace when it's about for you search the library for a card with mana value less than or equal to your devotion to black wow that's good put it in your hand and shuffle you lose three life so it's a tutor for devotion very good in commander monitor co colored decks like we have tricksters elk is a three three elk is this uh, oko's elk um cost three it has bestow and enchanted creature to lose all abilities and the green elk creature base power three three yeah this is definitely oko and uh not only for the abilities but also i can see rowan to will speaking so that's cool and then we have hydroelectric specimen this is one of the mono ones has flash is a one four cost three when it's about for you may change the target target instant source to spell with a single target okay so that interesting and then it has this wonderful lens oh wow okay priest of titania is back that's crazy <laughs> great card wonderful card from Woods of saga really happy to see it come back very very good card yeah it's not bad at all then we have the dream tide whale vanishing two and it costs three and it's a seven five when a player casts their second spell each turn you get to proliferate Again, this is more commander card. It's not bad. You can definitely keep it in play when you have the right deck to build. Then we have Marionette Apprentice. It's a one, two. Human Artificer costs two. You can fabricate one. And whenever another artifact or creature you control is put in the graveyard for a battlefield opponent loses a life. So this is more of a sack matters kind of thing um, than a beautiful art card. So that's crazy to see Priest of Titania back in a set this is insane i mean this is a great great card for the elf decks it's just as simple as that it's such a good classic as well sneaky snacker <laughs> hey they're cheeky like me the two one flying costs the mirror and when you draw your third card on in a turn you turn it from graveyard to battlefield tapped not bad it could be an okay card then we have golden tail trainer the one three fox samurai cost three or an equipment spells you cast cost x less to cast where x is golden trainer's power and whenever it attacks other modified creatures you control get plus x plus x until the end of turn where x is the power so that's really good if you can buff it up it's going to be really good and it's great in a modified deck reiterating bolt it has replicate to pay three energy cost two it deals two damage to target creature or planeswalker now we have triton wave breaker it's a one one merfolk wizard cost one it has bestow two and then the entire creature gets plus one plus one has prowess and this has the same ability Oh, victimized as well from Orza Saga, but this has been reprinted time and time again, so that's cool to see it back. It's a it's a great um, overall just uh, commander card and um, reanimate card. I guess you can play and draft pretty well. Primal prayers cost four. It's an enchantment. When it's a battle, you get two energy counters, and you may cast a creature spell with mana value three or less by paying one energy rather than paying their mana cost if you cast a spell this way you may cast this though i had a flash wow that's really strong that's really really strong that's just insanely strong i like that and then we have arena of glory foil wow as he enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a mountain you tapped on one red and then tap exerted so once you exert it, you can't exert it again unless it's not exerted and then add two red if the mana is spent on a creature spell against haste until the end of turn and um, that's really really good uh, really really good card and yeah i'm gonna put it there and then we have a forest full art for us that's beautiful and then a phyrexian germ that's really beautiful the full art with the eldrazi there in the background really really cool and uh, yeah we'll be unboxing um, every single product for this expansion thankfully so make sure to stick around so yeah that's gonna be exciting for us signature slam that's an instant pull it plus one plus one counter on target creature you control then each modified creature you control the other damage she goes to its power target creature you don't control that's great for killing androzi <laughs> and one go fire x and iron works when every attack you get one energy counter and you tap pay three create a three three fire x and golem not bad again energy consign to memory is an instant you can replicate it for one so when you cast a spell copy it for each time you paid this and then kind of target triggered ability or a colorless spell so that's great um, very situational but um overall i guess it's gonna be good waterlock teachings in the mirror of the flip search your library for an instant card or a card with flash reveal and put it in your hand and then shuffle well not bad it's a uh, it gets if it, uh, it fetches you stuff so that's that's not bad. Oh, the 
Gerdo Temple from Odyssey makes a return. So this is a uh, tap to add one generic and one generic and tap to untap target land. Very, very nice. Nice to see you come back. Whoa, another arena of glory. That's pretty cool. And then we have Cephalid Colosseum. It's a land is foil and it taps on one blue and it deals one damage to you. And then with threshold, pay one blue, tap, sack this card, and then target player draws three cards, then this card three cards and activate only if you have, you know, threshold. Eh, not bad, it's okay. And then we have a oh, forest and an empty card for those tokens or flip cards. To do, to do. So yeah, it's it's crazy to see some of these cards. I did not expect some of them. I will say that it's it's really really nice. Copy Crook is a zero zero shapeshifter rogue. Cost four. You may have it enter the battlefield as a copy uh, of any creature in the battlefield. Except it has whenever this creature attacks, it connives. That's really 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 freaking strong. Not gonna lie. Um, that's a really strong card for, I guess, Commander and Draft. Muster of the Departed. When it enters the battlefield, you carry a 1-1 one, one, uh, Spirit Creature Token with Flying. Has more beat at the beginning of your end step. If a creature that this turn, you get to populate. So you get to create more tokens. Token decks. Well, Escape Battle Mage is a 2-2 Eldrazi Wizard. Costs 2. Has Kicker. Either or. And if you cast it with a green Kicker, uh, Exile Target Artifact or Enchantment and Opponent Controls. Or if you pay the blue and generic cost, then Return Target Creature unopponent control so it's on your hand very very good situational card in general um might be really good for uh, commander in general because there's a lot of artifacts and enchantment in commander um so if you're playing an Eldrazi deck with i reckon the commander that is there because you don't have a lot of commanders with uh, the identity of Wooberg. i think there's none except for this new one so yeah anyway uh we have meteoric mace i don't remember this is this conspiracy i don't remember let me know in the comments down below it's an artifact equipment it gives plus four plus zero to the equipped creature and trample not bad then we have flare of malice so this is the flares or the you know the force of <laughs> so but here you may you have to sacrifice stuff that's already in play to be able to cancel the cost so cost four it's an instant it's blank you may sacrifice a known token black creature rather than pay this mana spell cost and each opponent sacrifices a creature or planeswalker with the greatest mana value amongst creatures and planeswalker they control not the strongest of them but it's not bad oh shadow the second sun okay enchantment R cost six and enchants a player and at the beginning of enchanted players post combat minion phase an additional beginning phase after this phase so this is interesting very nice card and it's a uh, mythic so why not let's put it here that's really really cool and then we have the gargoyle foil and it'll drive spawn not bad that is a cool cool card of course this is more like a commander card and uh yeah getting a second post combat main phase that's really cool okay then we have another beautiful pack and we're this is the last one of the first turn periodic rebirth and turn target artifact creature card from graveyard to your hand and deals damage equal to the card's mana value to up to one target creature planeswalker path of annihilation as an enchantment cost four with one green when it enters value you get to create two of the colorless eldrazis that you can stack for one generic and eldrazis you control have tapped on one of any color and whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value seven or greater game for life if you're gonna play an eldrazi deck i would reckon this is gonna be needed uh, the eldrazi deck that's right here in this expansion called eldrazi incursion will definitely need this card i don't know if they included it or not but that's gonna be a card you definitely want to play there then we have planner genesis an instant cost only simic look at the top four cards of your library you may put a land card from among them on the battlefield tab if you don't put a card from among them into your hand put the rest of the bottom of the library in a random order okay and then sink into stupor i mean this is a really good card i, I think this is a pretty pretty good card and it's quite cheap and then we have sink into stupor it's an instant return deck a spell on no land permanent and important controls through sword and sand costs three and you can flip it for the land effect and then we have the sinkage conquer which is from the jump starts a one two human wizard costs two whenever another creature enters the battlefield you control you gain one life and then for five you tap to exile target creature you control then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control okay and then we have archway of innovation it's a 
one and enters the battlefield tapped unless you control an island so this is the you know there's this and there's that so this is the new cycle of similar lands a check line uh for one blue tap the next spell you cast this turn has improvised which means your artifacts help cast it so that's really really good for those decks that care about artifact affinity and artifact matters beautiful foil ether spike an island foil and then ooh, a puppy philia exuberant shepherd <laughs> that's cute i really like that okay so we'll accelerate a bit more now to speed things up and we'll skip most of of the uncommons as well unless we see something that catches all right oh deep analysis makes a return and we'll start looking at it and now weight of the relic where is the 2 zombie nine it costs two it is golgari has vigilance this card gets plus one plus one for each creature card in your graveyard okay that's a reanimate slash graveyard matters tap sack another creature switch a library from land card put it on the battlefield tapped oh that's not bad um since it's not a non-token creature this could be really good in some commander decks for sure um don't know if it is good for anything else void pouncer really love the eldrazi's really do this is really a beautiful beautiful i think you can definitely make a case for using it in a some decks orange john that is really really cool so we have an instant that costs one white with kicker one target player can cast spells this turn if the spell was kicked creatures can't attack this turn just overall a great little card that sees a return i like the orange charm back in plane shift and then we have shifting woodland so this is the check land it tapped out one green and then for delirium for four it becomes a copy of target permanent card in graveyard until the end of turn and activate this with our four or more card types among cards in your graveyard so that's not bad and then we have mandibular kite uh planes that is beautiful oh my god that is just gorgeous i can imagine this in foil is going to be just wonderful and then we have phyrexian worm token that's just beautiful oh yeah man they really don't pull punches with the art some of these arts are just incredible i mean it, everybody does such a such a good job on it so we have amicool's messenger oh stable amulet <laughs> bog or thrower okay it's the black flip card oh nadir's nine blade always these are return and then we have pearlier imperial advisors the three four fox advisor costs three with double white pips lifeling and shaman spells you cast have affinity for auras very very good for an aura deck and whenever you cast an aura spell that targets it's a modified primary control you get to draw a card yeah absolutely great for a commander or a deck and then we have separation ray and the servo now you know the the thing that's frustrating though and this is also one of the reasons why i'm saying that maybe don't buy the freaking box which is like 200 and something pounds um yeah is is that you're spending a lot of money and just getting not a lot of modern worthy cards it, in my opinion you know you have so many um you know good modern cards that sorely needed some some reprints and you just like 90 percent of this set seems like it's more for commander and drafting than anything else oh okay then we have white orchid phantom with the richard king ferguson alternate boardless art this is really beautiful has flying first strike is a two two one inches battle if you destroy up to target up to one target basic no land is controlled mr saliva for a basic land card and put on a battlefield tap this is a reprint beautiful card i love the extended art of this one that is just a gorgeous one and then we have a land and a forest yeah it's yeah as i said it's just quite disappointing because yeah i mean come on you're you're playing so many cards in 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 modern that are definitely need a reprint and then you just fill the the set with so many useless ones so it's just bulk you know you're, you're looking at this and it's just bulk commander card these are the restless so this is going to be either a general or a commander proper is a five six and a human scout that costs a whooping five and it has john in its cost and whenever a lure go permanent card is put into your graveyard from anywhere other than battlefield put it in, onto the battlefield and whenever one or more creatures you control your combat damage to a player create a tarmogoyf token of, of course you carry tarmogoyf tokens i hope they put tarmogoyf in the decks because that's going to be good buried alive from weatherlight makes a return oh gris voracious larva okay this is one of the flip planeswalkers that we saw so this is going to be really really cool this is a legendary creature insect on a flip side so you have on the first side i should say you have 
So this is Grace Voracious Larva, cost one green as a one, two legendary creature insect death touch. Whenever Grass Voracious Larva or another creature is in the battlefield and you control, if it enters the battlefield from graveyard or you cast it from your graveyard, then you may pay one green. If you do, you exile Grass and then return it from the battlefield, transform it as its owner's control. So this is graveyard interaction matters. And then we have Grass the Plague Swarm. This is a beautiful, cool card. Has three loyalty. It's a Poison Walker, of course. For plus one, you get to create up one month black and green insect creature token, then mill two cards and put up Death House counter on the token. If a black card was milled this way, for minus three, you destroy target artifact or enchantment. And for minus six, for each creature card in your graveyard, you get to create a token that's a copy of it, except that it's a one month black and green insect. That is such a cool card. I really love this. I really like it. Then we have Titan's Vanguard foil and an island full. Wow, that's a beautiful island foil. That is just full art. And there is the Eldrazi right there. I think that's Kozilek. There you go. That's wonderful. Okay, here we go, here we go. As I said, I have not looked too much into the set. I know some of the more expensive cards, so we're just gonna be opening and praying that we get some of them. But either way, there are some really cool cards like Grex there. Okay, they have Tamiyo, then we have the Marinette's Apprentice, then we have wow okay i'll take that they reprinted the medallions okay so this is a tempest card emerald medallion they reprinted them also in commander masters so this is, uh, allows for green spells to you cast to cost one generic less to cast so quite quite a useful little thing and i'm gonna put this here very very nice card and then we have shield gengar sire of the famine so this is a legendary creature elder demon it's a six six that costs five and sacrifice another creature you get to create a blood token and if you sacrifice an angel this way you get to create a number of blood tokens equals to its toughness instead and then for three sack six blood tokens return each creature card from graveyard to the battlefield with finality counter on it meaning that if they die again they get exiled those creatures are vampires in addition wow this is a crazy card again commander card really cool for commander but again are we this is not commander masters this is not commander horizons this is very much you know not a commander set supposedly but yeah what can you do i mean in the end if you think about it commander is the 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 format that makes magic the gathering the most money it's also the one that saves Magic the Gathering in many ways and made it so popular. It made it so that a lot of the cards that used to be useless before, that a lot of people didn't, you know, they were just packing and packing and packing, that they gained so much value because people figured out ways to make them really useful. So that's why Commander is here to stay, unfortunately. And it has, well, gotten everything because that's what the majority wants. And let's remember, Wizards of the Coast is owned by Hasbro, who's a corporation, and they have uh, investors to keep happy and revenue is all they care about. Spy Master's Vault. Oh, it's a check land. Okay, so it's the black one and for one black and tap target creature control called Nine's X, where X is the number of creatures that die this turn. Okay, it's not a bad one, but it's not a great one. Oh, Toxic Delusion Foil. Wow, that is a beautiful card to see him for. Again, not a commander card, but <laughs> okay. Um, that is a cool card. And then we have a Plains and a Drowsy Spawn. Yeah, I mean, again, really cool card. Love to see it uh, in a commander set. Yeah, in here. I don't know what the hell it's doing, but sure. Why not? Why not? I like this one. Null and a Mental Blast. That is a cool, cool card. Um, it, you choose one. It's an instant. It costs one generic counter target multicolor spell will destroy target multicolor permanent this is a very very good card for the eldrazi but yeah when i was looking at modern horizons one and even two you were looking and you're like hmm there are sound commander cards in here, but you can see that the center of the theme of the rares and mythics, etc., is modern, right? But now it's just swapping to commander as much as they can. Ooh, reform, okay. <laughs> as he's a reprint. And then we have Roshin, Roaring Prophet, is a 4 4 giant shaman that costs 4 with Gruul in the cost and. It's a legendary creature when it's a battlefield mill six cards you may put a card with x in its mana cost from among them into your hand the x cost and then tap revealing the number of cards with x in its mana cost and then add two generic for each card revealed this way spend a mana only to cut to cast X spells. I, again, commander card, not in my modern set, but whatever, gift of the Viper foil. And then we have one of the flares here, the Malice one that we saw. So yeah, this is, as I said, a bit disappointing because it feels like, you know, they're preening it 
as if it was a master set for sure and it's even more expensive i think than most of the master sets that i've ever seen but especially now you had the insult of yeah adding chromatic card oh okay it's from scourge the wire was symbiote that's really cool that's oh <laughs> okay i'll take that Olamog the the filer this is a 7-7 seven, seven eldrazi legendary creature that costs 10 generic when you cast a spell so i get to put an x house there half their library rounded up right this is half exile just gone poof Kaput, done, no more. Then it has Ward, Sacrifice two permanents, and then when it enters the battlefield with a number of plus one, plus one counters, only equal to the greatest mana among the value cards in exile, not just the ones that you just exiled, but anyone. So if you have an Eldrazi in your opponent's uh, deck that you've just exiled, this becomes insane. And then it has anything leader X equal to the number of plus one, plus one counters on it. So that's, you know, insane. This card here is one of the more expensive alongside with Ugin Sanctum, if I'm not mistaken, of the expansion. And we are extremely lucky to have it. That is a wonderful card to, to have open. That is a beautiful, beautiful card. We have the Watchdog Foil and then an Island Full Art and a Copy and a Twin. Yeah, that was a lucky, lucky. Again, uh, this might see play in the Tron decks. This kind of card would, I mean, the Tron deck can easily pull off an Eldrazi like this. And if it does, it's just going to just destroy things so, so flipping quickly. You have no idea. Uh, <laughs> funny enough, if you'll check, we uh, have done an unboxing and guide of the pre-release for this. And we opened the, the file and we actually used it. And that was really, really fun. Okay, then we have the Angel of the Ruins. Makes another return. And then we have Ripples of Undeath. It's an enchantment that costs two at the beginning of your pre-common main phase. No three cards. Then you may pay one and three life. If you do put a card from one of those cards in hand. Okay, more of a reanimate, shenanigans kind of thing. Mill and just put back, not great. And then we have the Generatorium and the token. So yeah, that was a, that was a high. The, the Defiler there, that was, that was good. I'll, I'll keep that one. Okay, ooh, that is a beautiful card. I love the colors of the Eldrazi. I just, I just, I'm, I'm in awe at the color combinations that this side in. And just overall the cards, I think they were really, really cool and fun. Revitalizing the Repass. Okay, so this is the Gari one. That's not bad. And then we have the Barbarian from Odyssey as well. Mr. Return, of course. And a White Orchid Phantom in the normal version. Then we have Dog Umbra, Foil, and then a Mountain Foil. And then, oh, Moonfolk. That is a beautiful token. I really like that one. Really nice. So there we go. This is the last of the second, third. And then we will go on and we will start the last part of this wonderful unboxing. Really been enjoying this uh, to a certain degree. But yeah, Savine's Reclamation, a reprint and yet again. Oh, Bloodstained Mire, beautiful card that makes a return. I love that. And then we have Flare of Duplication. So this is an instant you can either pay the three, which is double red pip inside, or you may sack a non token red creature rather than play its cost. And you can copy target instant sources. Well, you may choose new targets for the copy. So it's a, it's a fork kind of. So it's not bad. And then we have the Inspired Inventor and the Swamp. Oh, wow, that is that. That is so cool. Oh, the Jet Medallion. There must be like an extended art of that one. That is insanely beautiful. Okay, down to the last third of the box. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just, just incredible cards. I, I think the ones that they did make for Modern, <laughs> They're really nice. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, um, the maze is back again. Oh, the feed, the fledgling dra dragon from um, is this Judgment. Judgment. Yeah. Okay, it's back. Disruptor flute is an artifact. Costs two generic. Has flash. As it enters the battlefield, you choose a card name and the spell that shows the name. Costs three generic more to cast and activate abilities of sorcerer. It shows a name that can be activated unless they're mana abilities. So this is kind of like a PV needle ish, not really, but you know what I mean. And then we have the cursed wombat foil and another servo. So it's not bad. Uh, this one is, you know, sideboard card and very specific. 
<laughs> that's it. Very specific cyborg card. So that's not a bad card, but they are better, especially if you're gonna play in a modern. There's definitely better stuff. Ooh, it that heralds the end as a 2 2 that costs 2. Call the spells you cast with mana value 7 or greater, costs 1 generally last to cast, and then other colors, creatures you control get plus 1 plus 1. That is another great card that you'll want in any of those Eldrazi decks 100%. Then we have the Creator Justice and ooh, Wooded Foothills in the Borderless version. That is very lucky for us. That is a beautiful one. I wonder if we get the Floor Destroyer as well. There's a Scurrilous Sentry and Foil. An island. It's a very beautiful island. And then another Servo Token. So yeah, that's great. So far, we've gotten quite a bit of those lands. Um, but I think Wooded and Wizbot are the ones that we're missing now. I'm not sure. I don't remember all the ones that they've reprinted in the set. But it's nice that they bring them back at least, thankfully. <laughs> and then we have the Noise. Pointed Altisar again and ooh, Archway Innovation in the Borderless version. So that is another beautiful Borderless. And then we have the Buried Alive. And what is this? The Ether Refiner. Okay, cool. It's foil. And yeah, uh, Archway Innovation, it's not bad. Uh, let me get it for you. If I can find it somewhere, um, it's here. So there you go. Side by side, Archway of Innovation. Check it out. The difference, spot the differences, you know? <laughs> so that's really, really cool. I think this is gonna be a good card in Commander. I don't know how good this is gonna be in, in any other format, but yeah, um, it's a really, really good card. Um, it could be good in limited or legacy. Legacy uses really heavily uh, relying upon uh, artifacts, but then again, I don't play legacy, so I might be putting my foot in my mouth. So there you go. Oh, pearl medallion. Okay, cool, cool. I like the medallions. I really like them. And then we have another wood of foothills. That's really, really nice. And we have the petrifying meddler planes and the token awesome but at least we're getting and i don't know if we're lucky or not because you know we haven't opened many of these um we're getting quite a bit of those uh, of those lands so far so that's not bad at all okay well, let's go as you saw we are speeding up now we're seeing a lot of beautiful cards i'm sorry for the spoilers up ahead but can't do much about it Coram the undertaker this is a commander card but it is one of the boardless ones so if i'm not mistaken this is what you get in the collector's question that is foil but i'm not sure anyway it's a legendary human warrior creature that is a zero five and it's another one of the John, so it's probably the, the commander of the of Dissa, the Restless. So it gets plus X plus zero, or X is the greatest power among creature cards in all graveyards. It's good, and when it attacks, each player mills a card. During each of your turns, you may play a land and cast a spell from one cards in graveyards that were put there from libraries this turn. Very, very strong. It depends on how you synergize with that, but we'll get into it with the, the respective deck. And then we have the Flare of Fortitude, the White Flare. It's an instant. You, you can sack a uh, white non-talking creature and then until the end of turn your life level can change as you control gain hexproof and indestructible this could be good in commander i don't know how good it's going to be in general but definitely in commander it can be really good and then we have kozilat's command this is a beautiful drazi instant so it's a tribal of kindred this is what they now call tribal and it's an x and two generic and then choose two target players creates x zero one colorless eldrazi spawns or target player scries x and draws a card and or exile target creature with mana value x or lands and exile up to x cards from graveyards this is a great command it's very cool and it's nice to have for an eldrazi deck of course and then we have a swamp full art that is really cool that is just really really cool that's emmer cool right there yeah get it it's cool and then we continue on let's see let's see let's see definitely if you are building an eldrazi deck this is the set for you <laughs> this is the expansion for you if you love eldrazi for sure one of them anyway oh philia the exuberant shepherd the illustration that we saw for before the corgi so this is a dog is a 2-2 that costs two has flash and when it attacks is out up to one target non-land permanent. At the beginning of your next turn, step, return that card onto the battlefield under its owner's control. If it ends the battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So that's really good. That's not bad. Uh, remember, you can only do that once. So you, yeah, it's, it's not a bad card. It's interesting. Again, it feels more like a commander card than anything else. But yeah, oh, the Fanatic of Ronas, the card that we saw before, that's really, really cool token, not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, 
it's a, it's a nice card that again feels more like a commander card than anything else but if you have a lot of VTD, you know enters the battlefield triggers then that's maybe the the way to go uh, i have no idea but let's see oh propagator drone cool quest for an acropolis the trickster's elk and then the strix serenade okay it's an instant cost one counter target artifact creature or planeswalker spells controller gets to create a two two blur blur yeah two two blue bird creature token with flying cool another one of those removals um this is one of those counters like the swan song basically but it's the opposite of the swan song so it just kind of uh, helps with the swan song and then you have undo not master okay so you also have adventures in the set that's crazy i'm gonna read this one it's a core rogue two two that costs four hordes of and uh, on the creature side is lifelink whenever another modified creature is in control dies you put two plus one plus one counters on this creature and then on the sorcery side on the adventure side you have throw a line and cost or and distribute two plus one plus one counters among one or two creatures you control not bad okay cool uh interesting i guess again modularity is a very commandery or drafty thingy i don't think you're gonna be able to do much with it in any other another case but that's pretty cool to see it happen and then we oh another of titania i really like this card oh ho, 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 ho. what the ever look i wasn't paying attention i swear i wasn't looking the nether goyf another one of the great cards of oh, this expansion it's a lower goyf creature and it costs one black and has a star power and one plus star toughness its power is equal to the number of card types among cards in your graveyard and its toughness is equal to that plus one and you can escape it for three exiling any number of cards from your graveyard with four or more card types among them so yeah that's that's just insane that's a great great pull love that i love to see it and there you go then we have the temperamental ooze and the planes and then on the draws we spawn token though that that was a hit we have four more to go but that was a hit and that's a mythic right there you go do 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 and that was really unexpected scary of gremlins oh snow cover waste uh makes a return here and then we have witch enchanter victimize devourer of destiny is a six six old dread it costs seven you may reveal this card from your opening hand if you do at the beginning of your first upkeep look at the top four cards of your library you may put one of those cards back on top of your library and you get to excel the rest so you get basically rearrange the top of your library and you get to um keep what you want and when you cast a spell exile tiger permanent that's one or more colors okay it's again more of a commander deck card but it's not bad bogart trawler three one goblin and a foil place beautiful beautiful and uh yeah this is another eldrazi the territory color very very nice three more packs to go we have been very fortunate i think we're missing just ogin sanctum of the really really expensive ones but i'm not sure you know prices have changed uh quite significantly and uh yeah <laughs> either way that's been incredible not bad at all toxic deluge yet another one eldrazi line breaker it's an eldrazi is a three three cost three it's red the void though trample at the beginning of combat in your turn take a creature control gains haste and plus x plus zero until the end of turn where x is the number of eldrazi control okay interesting and then you have electrozoa this is jellyfish and the fire exit germ all right two more here we go here we go two more this is gonna be cool all right electrozoa okay you have static prison okay so there's another prison effect oh the the color the art that we saw earlier junk driver oh thief of existence so it drives you the void three four with green and cost and when it recasts a spell excel up to one take a non-creature non land permanent opponent controls with mana value four or less and if you do this gains when this creature leaves the battlefield target opponent draws a card so yeah i see what you're doing it's 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 really really cool i actually like this um i like that a lot then we have vaccine bubble as an artifact and that we saw before it's foil and then a mountain and ooh, that is just wow that is ugin's binding oh that's another one of the cards that we want this is smart pool yeah this is smart pool oh wow that is just beautiful i want that that is just gorgeous um that that illustration is incredible okie dokie next uh the last one 
Last one, I thank you very much for sticking through to the end. If you have, let me know in the comments down below what card did you not expect us to find that we did find it. Anyway, we have Ether Revolt. Okay, it's an enchantment, cost four. It has Revolt as long as it's permanently controlled. A live battlefield this turn. If it's source you control, would deal common damage to an opponent or permanent. An opponent controls, it deals damage damage plus two. And whenever you get one or more energy, Ether Revolt is damage damage to any target. So that's interesting. Another we are Genko Future Shaper to five Moonfolk Wizard costs four with Azurius. And whenever another known token permanent control leaves the battlefield, choose one that hasn't been chosen. This turn you create a creature token with those characteristics of two two white fox with vigilance or the Moonfolk with flying, all the black rat lifelink and then for five you put a plus one plus one on each creature control and then we have warp tusker and a mountain and a forex germ so that wraps it up for us that was an insane insane opening and we've managed to get quite a lot of good cards that i just did not expect we would get at all so that's really really nice some surprises because i didn't <laughs> spoil myself fully yeah, overall, this was not a bad opening at all. Uh, we got really lucky. Our verdict on this is do not buy the freaking box unless you just want to collect the expansion wholly because realistically, it's going to be easier and cheaper to just buy the cards that you want, especially if you're interested in modern more so than commander and so on. Of course, if you're a collector that likes to have a full set or a full play set of the um, expansion, then yeah, of course, you're going to have to buy a few boxes to fill up that void. Um, it's cheaper generally, um, but we'll see. It depends. On, on the prices of this um, set but generally yeah it's just not worth it the amount of commander and draft cards in here just makes me want to just be disappointed really it's the kind of product that yeah you're opening a lot of people are opening because there are some really good cards in here but it's just yeah it, it's absurd and counting the price of the product itself which is insanely high and remember it costs wizards of the coast especially hasbro the same amount to print you know a super fancy foil blah 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 and a normal foil card so um the same thing goes for all these other cards it's the same um, you know same cost for them it's just that you're paying more for it and they're making in revenue so you know I'm, I'm not against it i understand it's capitalism whatever but i find that this is a bit of an insult this set is a bit of an insult overall to modern players you could have just called it something else and just done a, a modern horizons around modern cards proper anyway that's those are my thoughts if you agree or don't agree let me know in the comments down below will you read and reply to everyone i don't know if you have any questions as well if you like what we do and make sure to uh, give us a thumbs up and subscribe as it does help small channels like ours a lot and if you want to buy or sell any of these cards you can find them on our um, very own uk exclusive car marketplace we'll leave a link in the description down below to very friendly sharks like code uk and we'll see you in the next one until the next one we wish you a lovely day a blessed day be good be kind and we'll see you in the next video bye